Um, in reality, there should be very little difference between the two. Uh, we're all from a design background. and the, the way that we work together is down to project requirements and personalities, I suppose, into uh, uh, the end result. We should be all achieving the same, ga uh, same goal that we have clients that we're providing projects for, but we also have end users that are going to actually experience whatever's created. Um, and that interface between what is architecture, interior is a very fundamental part of that. So the, the interface should be very much connected. Um, and at Gensler, because we're a multidisciplinary firm, we're working very hard to actually integrate all of those disciplines uh, to the end goal of the, the project and the client. It's quite a wide-ranging question and um, I guess it's quite a wide answer as well. Each of the disciplines are uh, quite broad and cover lots of sub-disciplines in, in a way, particularly architecture which, which touches on um, uh, uh, urbanity, urbanism, um, sociology, and elements of psychology and then right the way through to the technical aspects of, of design um, and, and law. Interior design I guess is is slightly more contained as, as, as a discipline and less multi-headed. Um, obviously architecture is, is, reg is regulated or has been regulated for uh, nearly, nearly 200 years and has a, has a very well-renowned well, well body which has, which has supported the profession. And, um, and, and up until recently, interior design has been a sort of a, a standalone discipline without that sort of backbone and support. So. I think interior design is a very uh, new profession compared to that of architecture. And I guess that brings a whole kind of lack of understanding on both sides as well, a lack of understanding of, um, from interior designer's point of view of what architects' roles are, and then from the architect and what, what the role of the interior design is, because um, traditionally it would have been their role to do so. And I guess there is, a, there is kind of this boundary, but as I mentioned before, there is a blurring in the middle now. And I think as time has gone on, there's a much better understanding of, of how these two professions can work together. And, Again, I think that comes down to personalities. Um, if there's a, a desire to actually achieve a final goal, then there, there shouldn't really be a problem. And I think it's gone in phases through history that at, at various times, interiors can have uh, a very um, major impact on the way uh, a style or an era is actually represented. Whereas at other times, architecture and its place in the, the urban environment actually takes on a, on a priority. I agree with it in part, but I think there's definitely been an improvement within, within interior design education um, at degree level and then obviously when into getting to um, professional practice as well, the Surface Design Show and other shows also help this. And, and here at 1508 we, we um, regularly have CPDs where um, trades come in and they teach us about their finishes and products. Um, but I think there's a hell of a lot of crossover where interior designers can inform architects of new materials that they've um, found out and vice versa as well, you know, I guess architects look perhaps more at kind of the harder finishes, if you like, and the interior designer bring a, bring a whole wealth of um, softer finishes and unique finishes to the table as well. And I guess, and I guess there's a real synergy there between, between the two, and both are kind of educating each other, and that's, I guess, a better way of looking at it. It's not all coming from the architect looking down on the interior designer, you know, the interior designer can also, you know, give their two penneth in terms of... Um, what's new out there and I guess the surface design show certainly helps that because both architects and interior designers both uh, um, ascend it. I think people need to be more informed and better informed of what's out there, how they perform, how to actually get the relevant information but also where the industry is going with, with new products. So I think that helps from both sides of the, the coin. again, from our point of view, that the, the world is very flat. People are moving um, around the world. It's not just a UK thing, not just a London-centric thing. Um, and I think that helps the attitude as well. Having different cultures working within uh, design teams, um, responding differently to work in different locations is very important as well. So the, the world and cultural mix 
is, is helping to break down some of those barriers as well. And the other interesting thing is that they're becoming much more transient and much more dynamic. So I think the, the interface between the disciplines is becoming much more creative and much more interesting. I think, yeah, we were, um, we were set up expressly to try and address the disparity or the, the disconnect between the disciplines. And, and we, we certainly believe that, um, that they are significantly different disciplines and should be respected as such. Really, there are elements of crossover and spatial design, I guess, is the, is the middle bit where both interiors and architectures come, come together and that, that's an interesting territory. But beyond that, as I said earlier on, that, that there is a very wide gamut of skills from the most softest of interior designers to the most technical of architects. And for us, it's about accepting and respecting that and, and building a, a company culture which supports those disciplines. So we, we, we sit architects next to interior designers and we, we create an internal design dialogue which, which ultimately we feel creates a product which is which is better because of that engagement and discourse.